Here's the thing about gun laws. They aren't just a one and done kind of deal. They build off each other like a hydra, growing more and more heads and becoming even worse. Hi, I'm Ben, and you're watching The Minuteman Moment. We have plenty of examples to bring up, like our latest fight, where the Biden administration weaponized the 1934 NFA against 40 million gun owners, all for a piece of plastic. See, the NFA is a terrible law as written that only serves to infringe on your rights. But when combined with a rogue ATF that can randomly decide it's a good day to mess with gun owners, the bad gets worse. Luckily enough for us, GOA's crack legal team secured a preliminary injunction halting the ban from going into effect. Now what we have to worry about today is the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988. This law bans any gun that can't be detected by metal detectors. Way back in the 80s when this was written, Detection technology was pretty basic. The standard that all these guns needed to meet was to have 3.7 ounces of steel in the firearm. To put that in perspective, that's about half the weight of a Ruger LCP. Back then, that amount didn't really matter too much, because steel frame guns were all the rage at the time, and even the Glock had a full metal barrel. But now, as guns are getting smaller and lighter, this requirement to have this weight of steel is hindering innovation, stopping you from getting the best possible tool to defend yourself with like a super compact pocket pistol that doesn't sag your pants. It doesn't even make sense to keep this weight requirement, as now, the crazy looking machines at the airport that they make you walk through don't even need metal to detect a gun. Even when people 3D print guns like the Songbird or the Liberator, the instructions say to add metal screws into the grip to comply with this law. But that's easy enough for criminals or terrorists to ignore. It's nothing but ineffective feel-good words written down. Okay. So the steel requirement is dumb and stops you from getting a super light pocket pistol. But here's the kicker. There's another part of this law. This one is the one that could be weaponized the same way they did with pistol braces. This law has a section on major components. To simplify it, all guns and major parts need to be recognizable under an x-ray machine. Now this is a crouching tiger waiting in the bushes to be used against us. If you remember under the frame or receiver rule, the Biden administration wanted to make all gun parts a frame or receiver. Remember when Phil took apart his problem solver to find out what parts qualified as a frame? We will designate a part as a firearm if it's visible from the exterior and houses or integrates a broadly defined fire control component. So let's just get this out of the way first. The frame and the slide are clearly visible from the exterior and house many of the fire control components. The base plate houses many fire control components as well. The extractor and the extractor depressor plunger are also both externally visible and house an internally essential spring now as well. The magazine catch is visible from the exterior and houses the magazine catch spring. And yeah, the slide lock houses a spring and is externally visible. The magazine body, magazine base plate, magazine insert, and magazine follower all house or integrate an internal magazine spring which is certainly now considered a fire control component. The firing pin is also partially exposed to the exterior and integrates many other necessary internal fire control components. The trigger mechanism housing is visible from the exterior and houses many essential components such as the ejector and the trigger bar. Trigger houses the trigger bar as well and is externally visible. The barrel is also serialized, so the ATF wants dealers to presume it's a firearm but it also houses or integrates the externally visible guide rod in this groove. And lastly, the guide rod also houses several springs on my Glock 40 as well. That's 16 ATF regulated firearms in one Glock 40. 16 frames in one Glock 40. Now this is where the ambush comes from. That's 16 parts in a Glock that could be counted as a major component under this law. Then that means all of those gun parts have to be detectable or else the whole gun gets banned. Now what gets even crazier is that if any of those parts don't meet the arbitrary standard that AG Garland could just make up, whether it doesn't look like a firearm or it doesn't set off a broken metal detector, then that person who owns the gun could be charged under the law with having an undetectable firearm. This has the potential to be even larger than the pistol brace ban. What's worse is, usually this law expires after 10 years, and that timeline allows Congress to hold the Attorney General accountable to the intent of the law. But this time, they want to make that law permanent. And that, in turn, makes this law all the more ripe for abuse by the Biden administration. And guess where they're trying to sneak this fun new ban into we have to worry about, huh? You guessed it, the military's budget. If you thought it'd be a normal summer in DC, you're straight out of luck. But that's exactly what we're here for, to make sure nothing gets snuck by us or you. We warned Congress that we wanted a clean military budget. 
And here they go, throwing random stuff into it, even though they complain about that on Twitter. The Senate skipped the whole process and just threw it in at the very end. Senator Schumer decided to add what they call manager's amendments in right before the bill goes for a final vote. Now sometimes, the manager's amendments are used to fix grammar or spelling. You know, because congressmen can't afford spell check for some reason. But it's also a way to get stuff in to the final bill without having it be voted on. That means all those squishy anti-gunners get to use this as an excuse that it's a must-pass bill instead of having to vote on the amendment separately. Now you're asking, what can you do to stop this from becoming law? Well, here's the swamp talk part. Because both the Senate and the House have to pass their own military budget, at the end of the day, they come together and take both versions and decide what stays and what doesn't. Because the Senate version has this awful poison pill, but the House version doesn't, we can stop this by demanding that it's removed. We need you and all your friends to call your senators and representatives and tell them to remove the permanent authorization of the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988 immediately. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to stay updated on the latest GOA fights against the anti-gun swamp.